How's it going, people? Well, I must tell you this. It's just a tract I found. I went to the park to do home and videos and found this. It has been estimated that three people around the world will die every second. There's an asterisk. Ooh, a footnote. That means a fact. Population Institute of the United Nations. This means that by the time you finish reading this tract, over 900 people will have died. It's like I killed them or something. I didn't mean to read the tract and kill all those people. Maybe if I read real slow. Yeah. All right. For the next five minutes, I want you to imagine what it would be like if these were your last moments alive. I think I'd want to get laid. Okay. Um, after all, Someone in your city will likely die in the next few minutes. Well, it'll only take a few. Uh, it could be you. Why not? You die. Ooh. That can't happen. That only happens to other people. Hmm. When you die, Someone will place a sheet or a blanket over your head, unless it doesn't happen. Uh, not the dying, but the sheet or blanket part. It doesn't always get happen, you know. What if you fell off a cliff, you know? You might be there a while before somebody gets to you with a blanket. Uh, or if you drowned and you're caught under a log, how are they going to get a blanket to you? But, yeah, all right, we're being metaphorical here, aren't we? In most cases, they'll probably put a sheet or a blanket over, you, over your head. An ambulance may take you to the hospital for an autopsy. The undertaker will be called and arrangements will be made to place you in a grave. Not me. <laughs> I'm an organ donor and then ashes. And I'm hoping that they will scatter me in secret since it's against the law to do it. I want to be thrown in a river or something. Ashes, I mean. All right. Boy, is this a morbid little tract. It's got me thinking all these moribund things. All right. People will come to the funeral and shed tears over your lifeless body. Well, I'm not really interested in ceremonies, so it won't be my idea. They will look at your cold, blank face and more. That's if you have a face and it's open casket and you're not a pile of ashes. <sighs> but you will be gone if they look at your lifeless face. It's like no one home. All right. They will slowly drive back to the cemetery with your body in a casket. Ooh, scary. Think of all these people getting scared into salvation right about now. Yeah. At the cemetery, they will carry your casket to a hole in the ground and lower it down. People will cry. The men will cover your casket with dirt and a tombstone, in most cases. Your name, the date of your birth, and today's date, if you died today, um, will be on the stone. The people will leave, recover, and perhaps someday forget that your body is there. That's fine. There are people that have forgotten about me and I'm still alive, so whatever. Your five minutes are almost gone, so I must get to the point. When your time is up and you have died, where are you going? You already said, hole in the ground, right? 
I'm thinking ashes thrown in a river at night. I'm hoping the American. I like it. All right. We have already decided where your body is going, but what about your soul, if you have one? Will you be in heaven or hell? Or maybe Valhalla or the Happy Hunting Ground or Nirvana? I don't know. Oh, yes. You will be in one place or the other. One of those or none of them. Uh, so, in these remaining minutes, I will tell you what to do to get to the place of your choice. Let me guess. If you choose hell, do nothing, prick. You have already done enough. Cut and paste. Let me guess. Yep, Fellowship Track Society. For the wages of sin is death. That's Romans 6.23a. Just part of it. First part. The wicked shall be turned into hell. Psalm 9.17 If, however, you choose to go to hell, then or at least the Emerald City over the rainbow. Uh, you must do several things. Ruby slippers help. <laughs> uh, first, you must believe you are a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Secondly, you must believe you deserve to go to hell. Damn you. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned just by being born, and that's um, Romans 5.12. Finally, you need to trust Jesus to be your Savior. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's Romans 10.13. Your time is short in this world. The decision is your own personal responsibility. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgments. Hebrews 9.27 I will tell you what you must do to go to heaven. Otherwise do nothing, you've done enough. <laughs> you must acknowledge your sins. Repent and admit that you are a sinner in need of penalty for your sins, and then receive him as your Lord and Savior. This is the message which I have to tell you. Except I was Oh, now you must make a decision. Will you accept him or reject him? It's one or the other. Think of it once again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's John 3.16. I'm, I prefer Austin 3.16. It makes more sense. Your time on earth is short, but your decision, your decision for Christ lasts for eternity. Will you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior or be confident and be confident in everlasting life? If you have decided to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior after reading this tract, please write and let us know. That's Fellowship Tracting. The funny thing is, 
yeah, you could give them your name and address, but there's n not much room to tell them your story. Yeah, I read your tract. I'm buying your bullshit. That's about all the room you got on this. Anyway, that's another one down. Just found it in the park. I enjoyed it. Much better than this one, <laughs> since it didn't even have a point at all. Anyway, let me know if you learned something. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you are having. Bye.